Good morning. Happy Monday. It is so great to be here with you on this last day of February. Good morning. Good morning. I am America's super mom, mother of 15 children. And I love these segments of coming to you and talking to you about marketing and mindset. Uh, one of the things that really gets a lot of attention for me is having 15 children. How do you do it? What in the world is your secret? All these questions I uh, receive. And um, today I'm going to tell you some of my secrets when it comes to follow up. Uh, I think as a person who's responsible for a lot of people, a lot of activities, uh, just energy showing up when you sometimes don't feel like it, it's important to realize that it's something that you can't do alone. Uh, in addition to my faith and really trusting God through a lot of things, it's about systems, processes that can be set up and work on somewhat autopilot rather than me being an overwhelm, burnout, and depression. So if you have followed a little bit about my story, uh, I struggled with depression for 13 years. I was hospitalized three times and now I am all about empowering women as we get ready for Women's History Month uh, in one more day uh, to come up with strategies to help them face life's obstacles with a smile instead of stress. Now, SMILE is an acronym of five areas that we need to check in with ourselves every day to make sure that we are good with our mental wellness. And those areas are sleep, mood, inner voice, laughter, and energy. That's what my SMILE acronym is all about. Uh, during my journey, when I was dealing with depression, those were five areas that I really was at a deficit in. And I didn't realize it. And so I think it's really important to recognize those pillars that are important to our mental wellness. So instead of me being on autopilot, which was what my life was about, uh, really feeling numb, not really having any emotion, uh, just so busy with uh, focusing on what I have to have done in a day, rather than how I'm feeling and checking in with myself, I decided to flip that and put that autopilot onto the processes and the different things that I need to set up in order to be successful. So as a TV producer, a podcast host, uh, a speaker, author, and a lifestyle designer, all these things I'm able to manage and then some because of some of the systems and the strategies that I have in, in process so that I can be the best that I can be. So the main thing to remember is that we don't always feel like doing the things that we do. We don't feel good or things are out of our control. If many of us can really relate to this when it comes to this pandemic that we're facing right now. So many people don't even have the ability to determine what they need to go to work, right? Uh, you know, you've mandated the choice that you know, if you don't do a certain thing with your body, that you may not have a job. So there's things that are outside of our control that really can hinder our development in addition to our own daily routine. What are we thinking? What are we believing? You know, are we um, feeling like we have choices? Are we feeling like we're forced into things? I mean, uh, not to get political and all this other stuff, but the point is, we have control over that. We may not be able to control the outcomes, but we can choose how we want to show up, how we want to respond, all these things we have the power to do. And oftentimes we give that power away or we're led in different areas because of, you know, our thought process temporarily, right? Have you ever been in a situation where you want something right now and you just don't have the patience to wait and later on you may regret it. So some of you might, I'm not even talking to you because this doesn't apply, right? 
But if you are hurrying to an appointment, you didn't have time to eat, so you stop through fast food restaurant, you scarf down this meal, later on you're paying for it. One, it may not fill you up that long, okay? You could have just spent $10 on a, a value meal, and then uh, 40 minutes later, you're hungry again, right? Or maybe there's some other side effect. Your stomach's upset or, you know, you're feeling sluggish because of what you chose to eat, whatever the case may be, right? We can have those moments where temporarily we allow what's going on around us to determine a decision that we make that we pay for later. So when we think about systems and strategies, it is really forecasting the most peak outcome that we desire. If you desire to write a book, for example, okay, plug in my book, you know, you have to decide how many days a week am I going to work on this or for how long each day am I going to work on this book, right? It just doesn't happen because we make up our mind that we want to have a book. So it takes a little reverse engineering and thinking about how much time am I going to dedicate to this once a week or every day so that I can complete this task? Because there are going to be things that come up. There is never a situation where we can do something from start to finish usually. So, excuse me, it is in our best interest if we come up with different strategies on how we can break that down and so we can keep working and bookmark where we stop and keep moving on until we finish that task. Now, some things you could do start to finish, like take a shower, brush your teeth, right? Uh, go to a certain destination, drop your kids off at school. So there are things that we can just do and just have a complete end, a workout, right? But some other things, they take time. I'm in a challenge now where I have to drink a gallon of water. Let me see if I have one. A gallon jug, okay, of water. So this one's empty, but I have to gauge when do I start? How, you know, how often do I drink water all day to complete this task, okay? All right, so enough of that, but that's a little background. So today we're going to be talking about follow-up, all right? And so many of you may feel like, you know, oh, this is just the thing that I dread or you know, I just need to be more organized, right? You get all these business cards, which now we don't really even fool with this, but let's say you have these Zoom chats that you've saved. Uh, and for those of you that don't know, you can save the Zoom chat, right? There's three dots right at the lower uh, hand corner where you could save the chat and everybody's contact information or whatever they said is included in the Zoom chat. So you're saving this chat. You're like, hey, I got everybody's contact information. But when are you going back into that chat to make some of those connections, right? So today we're going to be talking about follow-up because many times we hear the expression, the fortune is in the follow-up. The fortune is in the follow-up. One more time, the fortune is in the follow-up. How many people are so impressed when you see that they follow up with you, right? They're just doing what really should be the norm. But oftentimes we allow distractions, new opportunities, all these different things. We're just going from one project to the next without a strategy. And it ends up costing us in our bottom line. It is less profitability that we have or just missing out on an opportunity a day late and a dollar short, so they say. So today, uh, let me get my screen up here. We're going to be talking about follow-up. All right, so as you can see in this visual, there are different ways that we can follow up through a phone, through um, a video, right? Email, um, just ways that we can reach out to their social media platforms right? Tagging people. All this can be considered follow-up. So follow-up leads to profitability. Now, you may be wondering, what is the big deal about follow-up? Yes, I hear that there's fortune in it, but what it allows you to do is to be top of mind, okay? It lets you stand out from the rest. So imagine you go to a networking event, okay? Let's just 
for uh, argument's sake, we're at, we're at a live event. And many of us are passing out our contact, contact information, meeting great people, shaking their hands or really connecting. But after that event, we don't do anything with those connections. However, you're at that event. The next day, you get a text message or a video message from someone who said, I really enjoyed our conversation about how you empower women with mental wellness. I really would love to see how we can uh, create and collaborate together. Now, how impressive is that, right? That means that they're listening, that they valued my time. They even want to connect with me to create something in the future. They want to collaborate. So imagine if those tables were turned and this is you reaching out to those connections and thanking them for giving you their time and you remembering what it is that they are skilled at or whatever their vocation is, and you are um, offering them the opportunity to connect and collaborate. So that is really the first thing that we can do is to thank someone for their time, thank them for whatever that situation is. So if you see in this visual, it doesn't take a lot. We've got Canva, there's BizArt, I mean, all these different platforms that allow us to create graphics or uh, send out cards, right? You, where you can physically send someone a card. But just for um, example's sake, we're going to dive into just regular graphics, right? So this is simply a Canva graphic that you create and you customize with the visual for the individual, right? Now, when you do this, this is something that is, um, you can tag them on, okay? So if they are visually in the photo, this is something that you could do as a post and tag them. You could also send it as a personal message through email, uh, through the messaging platforms on however you're connected. So if this is a LinkedIn connection, you could send them a LinkedIn message with this graphic or you have the option of sending it as a post, right? Maybe you have thankful Thursdays. I'm just using that as an example. And so you have this graphic and you say, thank you to Ivan for being a guest on my podcast. So then you tag them and you talk about what insight you gleaned from that uh, collaboration. And then in the comments, you can even post the collaboration. So the key about follow-up is to always think about expanding your platform, right? So people, maybe Ivan is not a um, uh, an ideal client, right? However, Ivan may know some people that are your ideal clients, okay? So uh, I know this to be true with uh, Ivan because he is actually the founder of BNI. Right. So he's the founder of BNI. So I'm sure he's got a plethora of connections that might be interested in me doing a speaking engagement for their organization about mental wellness. Right. So the list can go on and on. So when you are tagging and promoting other people, it's an opportunity for you to expand your base all while staying top of mind to that person. Now, it's really important to think about having their visual on there as well, because they may be more prone to share it, right? If you're being recognized and someone is honoring you and it is customized, that is something that definitely you might want to post on your platforms, right? Because it's related to you. Oftentimes, we get a lot of things on our platforms that we're tagged in and they don't have anything to do with us. We just simply know the person. And so we may not be prone to spread that or share it depending on what the content is. But anytime something may have our face on it, you know, we're like, wow, this is great content that I could post or, you know, it's social proof, right? You're providing 
not only proof for this person being a guest, but also proof and credibility about you being a podcast host, about the type of content that you have on your podcast. So a number of things can happen simply from a thank you. So the next thing that we can use our follow-up with is with updates. Now we are rapidly going into 2022. Uh, just tomorrow is going to be March 1st. However, we're still in the first quarter. So it's very likely that you could still get away with uh, telling people Happy New Year, checking in on their goals, uh, taking that opportunity to say, hey, um, I want to let you know what my goals are and want to see if we can collaborate, right? Because we are heading rapidly into 2022 and I want to be mindful of my priorities and things that I want to accomplish in a timely manner, right? And so I want to make sure that I'm doing these every day. So when we're sending updates, it could look like an email that is, hey, I want to make sure your content, uh, your connection uh, ways are still current. Uh, I'm just tongue-tied today. So what I'm saying is like, do I have the correct email? Uh, do you have any other businesses that you started? You know, we've had so many people go through a lot of changes with COVID. They may not even still be in the same industry. Uh, maybe they've modified, they started their own business or whatever the case may be. So updates and keeping in contact with people are very important. So in addition with the updates, is it's a perfect opportunity for you to highlight different things that you're doing. All right. So maybe you have a book club. So a lot of these things um, we can really create a graphic for. Right. You could send a personal message. Hey, I'm starting a book club. Uh, do you have any books that you could recommend? Right. So you are asking them a question and it's still highlighting something that you're doing. Right. So this is a post that you can make. Hey. Uh, I'm starting a book club and this is something that you could put to the people that are you're connected to. Do you have any book suggestions? Now that's, a, um, do you read? You know, you could start doing polls and everything related to what it is that you're doing now. But this is a way that you could still update people. You could stay top of mind. Uh, maybe you have some books that you could give away as prizes, right, for the book club. Maybe you can give them away as a referral bonus, or uh, if someone suggests some books, anything that anybody does to help you in your new venture, so to speak, is a great opportunity for you to stay top of mind. So imagine if you did a post asking for suggestions for the next book for the book club, and you chose someone's name. Uh, you know, I mean, someone just uh, threw a title out there and you chose that book. And then later on, you sent them a thank you gift of another book. Thank you so much for adding value to our book club. We read that book and we want to gift you with the time that you took to make it known to us about this book. Because if it wasn't for you suggesting it, we would have never read it or whatever. So it's a great opportunity that you can be top of mind and simply send someone a gift by just answering a question in your poll and you take an action on it, right? So it is creating this momentum and this energy that is helping you to move forward with your goals and your dreams and your visions. And so as a result of doing that, it's just really bringing people along with you right? How much does it really cost to send out a book, right? You could send it directly from Amazon. It could be with a gift receipt, you know, really showing gratitude because of them being invested in you. And maybe they may think it was no big deal, but you taking that time to show your appreciation by thanking them in the form of this or a gift card or whatever else you might want to say. The next thing is notifications. Right. So we get a lot of them. We get notified when someone is commenting, when they're liking or uh, whatever the case may be. Uh, it's their birthday. Right. They tagged you in a post. We've got all these notifications. 
but part of follow-up is really using those to your advantage. So one of the notifications that we get across the board with most forms of social media is when it's someone's birthday. So simply creating a graphic with that message, something that is evergreen, you can use all year long for whoever. So you could shout out happy birthday. And this is a personal message that you could put in their message, um, uh, in their message platforms. So it's something you could send personally to them, or you could uh, make birthday announcements. That could be something that you regularly do on your social media. So, you know, maybe you celebrate birthdays on Mondays, for example. I'm just using that as an example because it can really be overwhelming with uh, all the different birthdays that you could do every day. But I think one day a week might be kind of overwhelming too. But this is a way that you could do a lot of them at one time and, um, you know, make uh, announcements and tags to them. So for example, if I have birthday Mondays, for example. So this post is something that's evergreen. It comes up every Monday and maybe there's a message I could say, uh, in addition to today being corn dog day, for example, I'm just throwing that out there because they've got so many days off. You want to know the days you go to national today.com. And that is where you can find out about the different holidays and really random days that are going on in the year. But anyway, you could say in addition to this day, it's a very special day because it is the birthday for my connections, Sally, John, Aaron, right? And you tag them. Then if you have any content related to them, maybe you have a photo that you could put in a comment. You have a, a podcast interview you could put in a comment. Uh, maybe they um, have shared some insight. Maybe there's a quote that they say that really reminds you of them. Whatever that content is, you can put that in the comments for each one to kind of get the life going in the post, right? So this is a post that you could do weekly and it could be shout outs. Now, um, so it's something that you can decide what works for you. You could also, where you see my picture is posted in the balloon, it's possible that you could just take the time to get their graphic from their profile picture and put it there on the balloon and make that announcement. If you have three or four connections, each of those balloons could have somebody's face and you could be shouting happy birthday. So there's so many different ways that you could do it, right? Um, so this is just an example. But using that notification uh, for those birthdays is a great way for you to stand out and stay top of mind, you know, because it's something that is already given to you. And a lot of times, I don't know about any of you guys, but the older you get, the less it seems like your birthday is important. I remember when I was a kid and it was the countdown and I'm all excited till I get to be 16, then, you know, 18, then 21, right? You're so excited and you're just loving the gifts that you get. But as you get older and you're responsible for children and bills and obligations, you know, it's like, hey, happy birthday. That's about all you get. The gifts and stuff kind of get caught up. So when you get someone who takes the time to customize something, you know, this is a great way that you could really stand out because a lot of people are just going on with the hustle and bustle of life and they don't have time to do some of these things that really, they don't take as much time as you think, but it's an opportunity for you to connect on a deeper level. So let me move on because I still have a couple things, a couple slides to show, and I am running close on my time. So another way to use follow-up is with holidays, right? So as we approach, you know, I was saying we're still in the first quarter. You could tell people Happy New Year, uh, tell them some of your goals, ask them about their goals. Uh, you could uh, find out if they're uh, planning anything new uh, in the next 
30 days that you might be able to collaborate on. I think so often we miss out on opportunities by simply following up with people. So for example, just, uh, you know, back to my book again, right? Uh, I have the opportunity to where I could possibly give my book away as an in-kind type of donation for an event. And so this will expand my reach for someone who may read the book and share it with someone else, because it is not really that we have these overnight successes. It really is about the fact that if we just continue doing one thing a little bit at a time every day, the compound effect about that. So we can't just do things one day and expect for it to last a lifetime. You don't go to the gas station and fill your car up and think that it's going to last you 30 days. The more you drive and use that gas, it's going to deplete and you're going to go back and refuel, right? So we have to think the same thing when whatever we're posting or whatever that is, there, there's only so much life expectancy to that. You know, we have to realize that we have to stay with it and keep that momentum going. So another way to follow up with people is with the holidays. So something creative, you know, we just had Valentine's Day. So loving all my connections today. I would love to chat on Zoom, right? So just this simple example about recognizing them, you know, for the holiday, a time when it's really busy, and then extending the call to action for them to connect on a Zoom call. Another thing, it's Easter. So happy Easter from our team, right? That's fastly approaching. Now, for some people, they might get offended or you could preface it by saying, you know, this is a holiday that I celebrate. It reminds me to recognize others, whatever. You could have any kind of verbiage with it. Because sometimes when we have these graphics that we create, we just assume that everybody does it. You know, I have a lot of international connections. And so just because I'm celebrating a certain day doesn't mean that um, other people are celebrating that. So this is a place and a time that you could kind of promote the fact that you are, you know, in the United States, this is what we do for some of your connections, you know, as you post some of these things. So all of this is a deep dive into uh, following up. And I want you to remember that chaos may be constant, but don't allow you from showing, don't allow it to stop you from showing the world your greatness, right? So if anybody knows chaos, it is me. I love this visual because it's like me having two faces on one side and it's kind of hard to see the uh, picture uh, I have on a suit and the other one is an apron and, you know, papers all over the place. It's just chaos, right? So it's showing me being two people and one is America's super mom. And um, we have to remember that if we just stay focused on what it is that we want to do, that this chaos doesn't have to stop us from being great and doing the things that we want to do. So this was definitely um, a very... Uh, deep dive into follow-up, and I really could go a lot deeper uh, for different ways that we could do it. But I hope that this really addressed some of the thoughts that you might have regarding follow-up, ways to make it a little easier. I uh, would love to connect with you. Uh, you can just send me an email and just put um, follow-up in, in the subject line, and I definitely can get with you on a call and uh, help you to figure out how you can do this in your business. One session can be all it takes to get that strategy going, and then you're off to the races. So I want to thank you guys so much for joining me on this Monday's episode, and I look forward to seeing you all next week, and next week it will be March. So happy, happy early March, and I'll see you next week. Bye for now.